congrats on a wonderful movie. Thank you. Two times. Two times? Two times. Wow. That's right. Committed. That's a good sign. <laughs> um, so I have to ask the question. Um, if you could you know, bring any of these powers to your real life, what would it be? Or which powers would you bring? Poof. Well, Lexi. Well, the power that I would have is to give myself any power that I want at the time. So like, let's say if I feel like teleporting or flying or turning invisible or telekinesis or anything, just I could just give it to me and boom. Or anyone else that that would mm -hmm. that'd be my power. See, I didn't even know the word telekinesis. <laughs> I still don't know what she's talking about, so I don't know what that says about my level of intelligence. <laughs> Maybe that'd be my superpower. I would just be smarter. <laughs> well, if I had power, I think uh, uh, I adore one thing. Anytime I see a cake, I want buttercream frosting. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't care what they do, but if there's buttercream frosting on it, I'll get it. I used to go to Vaughn's and get a birthday cake once a week for myself. <laughs> Happy had, birthday to me. They did it there and they had buttercream frosting. Now they do WI, it says, with ice, meaning yeah. it's not buttercream frosting. Wow. So I can't buy them anymore. That's the power I'm on. Well, that's a plug to Vaughn's. Uh, where's the buttercream exactly. frosting yeah. cake? They're sponsoring this. Right? Yeah, yeah. Vaughn's is sponsoring okay. this. Okay. So they'll bring back your, your icing. <laughs> Um, so obviously, you know, this is a, you know, a big supernatural thriller, but you, know, you have to play it as real people. How do you bring realness to something like this? I think that's what uh, the Adam and Zach, our directors, really excelled at, was kind of creating a safe environment for Definitely. us to feel, to feel safe to, yeah. to explore that. And especially, you know, Lexi's carrying yeah. this thing. Mm -hmm. um, you, do you want? Uh, uh, I mean, Go. I mean, when I when I first started filming, I was I was kind of nervous because it was like it was a pretty hard script. But and then everyone was just so nice. And when we went to film, it was just I knew I was acting. I knew everything was fake. And they really, like Amanda said, they really created a safe environment for all the cast to be in. And after I was done filming, I would go give everyone a hug and start laughing. So after the really intense scenes, you know, it would just I would just have a break and that I couldn't have done the film that that's really I couldn't have done the film without Adam and Zach and the whole crew. They were yeah. my team. Yeah. Dream team. <laughs> what about you all? How do you bring, you know? I'm sorry? So do you, how do you bring sort of realness to, you know? Uh, I'm not hearing how anything. do you bring realness yeah. to in this kind of genre to the character, how, to your performance? Well, since I began in my career, I've been interested in one thing. Do I believe it? Mm -hmm. uh, do you believe it? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. So I try and be as real as I can. And uh, I tried to, she picked that up right away. She already had that ability. Mm -hmm. But uh, so many uh, times you get in something that says science fiction, oh, you know, where are the cone heads or where, you know, where are we supposed to come in with science fiction? And uh, I, I don't know. I did one movie that was very good, but the science fiction was very kind of honest, and that was Silent Running. Mm. You know, I mean, he had, a, he, he had a knack on it, you know. He's a kind of a genius guy, though. But uh, I just, uh, I'm always about the reality of the situation, what's really happening. Somebody asked us a question earlier, what do you do just before the camera rolls, you know? Well, I take the truest thing I see on the set, that the guy's a little nervous who's trying to turn the switch on and so forth and so on. So I'm aware of a real thing that I'm really seeing happen right there. Mm -hmm. So that keeps me in the reality of what's there. And uh, when I left the theater, I realized that movies were better than the theater because that's forever. Mm. And the theater, you know, what did he say? <laughs> what did the guy, the guy with the cripple thing, what did he say, Helen? You know, I mean, I, I'm just not that cool. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, between the three of y'all, y'all have like a ton of credits, but, you know, Lexi, you're still very young. What advice did you all give to Lexi, sort of starting a career out? 
I don't I don't know if she needed much advice. <laughs> she's, she's a wizard. I mean, as far as performance stuff, I had not. I mean, I was learning from from her. Yeah. There's something beautiful about working with kids who are talented, like she is, where they really force you to be present in the moment. To to what Bruce was saying about that that is what when your purest acting can come out is when you are not thinking about oh I want to do this and trying to control everything, but just being present in the moment. Mm -hmm and seeing where the scene takes you. And again, Zach and Adam were so great at allowing us to have that freedom to, to explore um, extra moments in the scene. And I think that's what you see on, on screen of that realness, is like they, they really created that space for us to find those extra moments and weren't so caught up in all these special effects and all yeah. these you know sci-fi things. Like there's a real true family story at the heart of this. And if that wasn't, true then none of it would have worked and so they really um really catered to to creating that safety net for us so that we could bring that to life my biggest thing with lexi was <clears throat> she's a fabulous actor stop acting mm. just be let's have a conversation uh no but when i rehearsed i wanted to say it like this out you say it like right now you know what I mean? And you got that. The first day you were a little skittish about it, and you mm -hmm. said, well, but the guy wrote this line in here, yeah. and he's going to be pissed off if I don't say it that yeah. way. No. He'll love the fact that you made his dialogue mm -hmm. alive and real, and you got that right away. Mm -hmm. And that was when I knew that you had a, a possibility as you go on now, because you have something I haven't really seen, uh, any young girl. You have a charm, and uh, it's a big person's word, and little kids don't do it, but Shirley Temple is charming. You're charming. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> That's Thank beautiful. You. Um, so congrats on a wonderful film. Thank oh, you. Thank you so much. Uh, this isn't your first collaboration. How did this come about to be working together? We met 12 years ago on a reality television show as contestants. Oh, uh, oh, it was okay. called On the Lot. It was basically like American Idol, but for filmmaking. Okay, wow. um, with Steven Spielberg and Mark Burnett, and we were making movies every week against each other, trying to, you know, America would vote someone off every week, yeah. whoever made the worst film. And It was like filmmaking summer camp. <laughs> you know, we just made movies every week, uh, and we became great friends after, and we kind of worked separately on stuff and, and started to collaborate yeah, yeah. more and more. And, um, this is the first big project we did together. I mean, we, yeah. we were kind of struggling filmmakers trying to get our dream movies made, and none of them were happening. <laughs> <laughs> so we said, all right, what kind of movie can we write that we could make even if we had zero dollars? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's where the initial conversations about Freak started, but it obviously grew from there. You know, at first we were thinking, we would play the roles and my son would play the kid. Right. <laughs> that was the first Shoot it draft. In his house. <laughs> I love it. Um, but then when we started showing it around, we started to get you know actors interested. Nice. Um, Bruce Dern was the first actor who signed on, and, oh, wow. okay. and we were like, we never expected a two-time Oscar nominee yeah. to want to be in our movie. Yeah, I was supposed to play that role, and now oh, Bruce wow. Dern's playing it. <laughs> Still my role. Oh, Way better that we could have actual actors <laughs> <laughs> yeah. play the parts. So tell me about the story of Freaks. Like, is it allegorical? Like, how did y'all come up with the idea? Yeah, I mean, yeah. the film was really inspired by Adam's son growing up, seeing his perspective on the world. Mm -hmm. As kids grow up, they don't really know how the world works. Right. They don't know a car alarm is super scary, but dragons are real and totally safe. <laughs> and we wanted the audience to have that perspective as they were watching the movie. So in the movie, you follow this little girl named Chloe, who's growing up in this house. She's never left her house. Her, her dad says, if you ever go outside, people will kill you. Right. And as an audience, you don't know if he's telling the truth or not. Yeah. You don't know if there's scary stuff outside or yeah, not. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanted to tell a sci-fi story from a little girl's perspective okay. um, to get the audience into that mindset. And then crazy stuff happens, <laughs> um, but it's really hard to predict where the movie's going because it's all from her perspective. Yeah. Um, and then thematically, you know, we definitely were inspired by you know political stuff going on and 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 also stuff from our own family history uh, uh, to tell a story about you know what it's like to be different in the world. Yeah, I, I mean I think that effect really worked because I definitely felt that claustrophobic feeling and that feeling of like wait, what's the ice cream truck here? For? <laughs> Can I trust him? You can't trust anybody. <laughs> like that, that um, feeling of like not being settled, I really enjoy. Cool, cool. Um, so there's you know 
obviously there's a lot of really cool powers in this movie. Mm -hmm. What was like your favorite one to bring to life? Yeah, well, the film has uh, an interesting take on sort of the people with powers genre. Yes. We tried to approach it from a much more grounded, much more real, and much more character-driven perspective. Mm -hmm. People that have powers in our movie, all their powers come from their character what it is they want in the world. Right. So if someone is sort of someone who's sort of a trickster, maybe they can disappear. Right. If someone really wants to get outside and, and leave the world, they have the ability to kind of bring the outside world to them. Um, and we tried to also make sure that even though this movie had a low budget, we wanted it to feel really, really big. Mm -hmm. And so all of the visual effects, there's over 200 visual effects in the movie, all had to feel like a camera had just captured them by accident. Right. It all had to feel very real and very photographic. So we also tried to pick visual effects and abilities and powers that felt sort of authentic and real and photographic rather than big CG monsters and stuff because we couldn't afford that. Right, so yeah, because like Emil, this Emil's character is really the only one that has that like graphic bubble. Yeah, right? yeah, and, it, and, and for us that came from, he's a dad and he wants to protect his daughter and put her in a bubble, and keep yeah. her safe. So that was kind of how we approached the superpowers. It was sort of like, what, would, what made sense for this character? Um, and, uh, but luckily, f freezing time and turning invisible are very cheap yeah. visual effects. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And we also kind of wanted to go real with, with the sort of story of what would really happen in the world if people started to develop special abilities. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't just go out and start saving strangers. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> there, there would be no... Uh, we just sort of thought, okay, maybe superheroes wouldn't even exist. It would just be people kind of doing their, trying to use these for their own gain. Yeah. And then what would be society's response to that? Well, they would make that illegal. Yeah, of course. And it kind of creates this cycle. Yeah, I really dig it. I think I might be out of time. Can I have one more question? <laughs> okay, sweet. Go, Go for, for it. it. Go for it. <laughs> so, you know, there's like a lot of, um, you know, narratives that are run between like two locations, right? Like, so, you know, mom is, is I can't talk about plot, but you know, just like two different yeah, locations. Yeah. How did you all approach that narratively, like, you know, shooting that? Yeah, I mean, we we really wanted to make a movie that we could make no matter what. Mm -hmm. So we that meant that it would have to be made for a low budget, that we would have creative control over it, so it would have very few locations. Mm -hmm. But in writing it, we tried to be very, very clever about making sure it didn't feel like one of those movies where we were just trapped inside of one house mm -hmm. in a few rooms. Even though a lot of the movie is in a few rooms, we do a lot of very visual, clever things to kind of expand the scope Make of the movie. Make it feel bigger. Um, and in some inventive, fun kind of ways that I think audiences haven't seen before. And, and a lot of that came in the editing process. You know, we had, we had to build this sequence that tried to be more and more exciting and put people on the edge of their seat. Yeah. We're cutting between locations. So a lot of that was kind of found through editing oh. um, and, uh, you know, testing. We showed it every weekend while we were editing to our friends. And like, is this working? <laughs> okay, it's not working yet. Back to the editing room. Yeah, yeah. I think it was really cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.